Hello, gamers, CS fans. How's it going? Um, apologies if I sound a little bit under the weather. I just woke up to make this video. And let's let's address the elephant in the room. A legend stage did not go as planned. Um, I'm kind of torn on this one because from a Pickham's viewpoint, I'm gutted. G2 should have beat Furia. They're 11-7 in the lead in the last game. If they win that, I scrape by with five picks, you know, and everything's okay. It was close, but we got it done. The Diamond Dream is still alive. But from the broadcasting perspective and like the CS fan in me, which is first and foremost, uh, it was an amazing legend stage. Like, I'm so happy to be proven wrong on a lot of these picks. And there was some amazing storylines, some really cool moments for me to sink my teeth into as a commentator. And from a broadcast sort of talent team, uh, it was a really amazing legend stage. Like, the amount of hype that there was in the green room and just watching these games together, I'm sure at home as well, watching these games, uh, the drama it brought up was incredible. So let's discuss some of these storylines that I just mentioned because it's going to educate um, us on what we go for in the challenges, uh, sorry, not the challenges, the champion stage. And obviously, at the end of the day, Pickhams are, when you really boil it down, their their guesses, their stabs in the dark, educated guesses of stats, recent performances, current form, storylines, maybe things that are going on with a team that you can narrow things down with, but they're ultimately guesses at the end of the day. So let's uh, discuss 0330 picks first. Imperial, I had them to go through my challenger stage. They did squeak by, but I was concerned that when they got to the legend stage that it was going to be a bridge too far. They were going to crash out, struggle. They had their 0-2 matchup against BNE. I think the Bad News Eagles just didn't perform. I think they came apart at the seams. Honestly, I think they should have won that game. So Imperial managed to survive that one. They play again, and it's the same story. And honestly, once I knew my pickums were just wrecked, and there was no way of me, you know, course correcting. Um, I was hoping Imperial would go all the way. I was hoping they'd go at the champion stage for the for the narrative and the story and the feel good vibes. Um, unfortunately, it didn't happen against Copenhagen Flames. They got wrecked in the first map, and then Vertigo was super close, but they ended up getting pipped to the post by the Danes. Furia, I, I, I said this in, in my uh, previous video, uh, that they could 3-0 and steamroll people, or they could crash out. They nearly did crash out, and honestly, G2 should have beat them. G2 choked. For want of a better term, they choked the game. They were 11-7 in the final map, and they, they just disappeared on that T side of Ancient. Uh, credit to Furia, though, for coming back from that and like showing a lot of grit and tenacity. But let's be honest, G2 should have won that game. Um, let's discuss Cloud9. They were shocking. They were appalling. Uh, there's no... I can't really say any positives about them, to be honest. Um, second game, I was casting them against FaZe. They let Nuke go through. On the one hand, I'm being told it was a mistake. On the other hand, I'm being told it was intentional. If you intended to let Nuke... Uh, go through as a team that does not play nuke against phase a team that will play nuke um if it wasn't a mistake then it was a terrible decision and if it was a mistake how are you making that mistake at the legend stage of a major i don't know uh, they were woeful and the most disappointing team for me in this entire major so far i think Vitality put on some really good performances uh, from a casting viewpoint and like a CS fan watching them play against Big uh, was amazing. Obviously watching them play against Heroic in that last game was really good, like some amazing moments. I think unfortunately we see that, that you know, this Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde with Vitality, they remind me of like old school VP, where it's either they are going to be the plow or they're going to get plowed, <laughs> you know, and... We saw a bit of both at this major. I think it highlights a bit of a problem where Zaiwu is still, he's got more of a supporting cast at times, but he is still the most important player for, for Vitality by far. And he didn't really show up in that last best of three. He had some incredible moments the day before against Big. And basically when he decided to go God mode for the last five or six rounds with Diorp in overtime, he pretty much solo carried Vitality to that win. But we saw the other side of it where what happens if he doesn't show up? What happens if he's quiet? And 
he doesn't really have any impact with the orb. He's not really feeling it with the rifles. But they crash and burn. Ents were consistent. That's really, really good. Because I was a bit concerned that maybe that wouldn't happen. Heroic against Vitality had Mirage. They played just God tier Counter Strike. I don't think any team on the planet, when they started that off, would have got even close. Storm was dropping 20s at ease, dropped 30, I think, at like the 26th round against Vitality. Um, he was just unbelievable in that game. Just an incredible talent. Uh, FaZe had some rocky moments, but for the most part, they performed about as I expected. Um, it wasn't peak FaZe by any stretch, but it was more than good enough to get them through, which I thought it would. G2 were disappointing. Um, inconsistency issues. Their T-sides are shambolic. I don't know if this is an Alexi thing, if it's an x thing, um, if there's something going on in that team, I don't know. But their T-sides seem to lack identity and cohesion, and they just fall apart. We saw it again against Fury yesterday, and that ultimately was the difference maker. Na'Vi looked just like Na'Vi, mate. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like They just looked really sharp. It was kind of what we expected. Um, again, the reason I don't put Na'Vi in the teams that I'm pretty sure are going to make it is in case they do drop that one map. Uh, but in this case, ironically enough, if I just switched Na'Vi and Furia, then I would have my five pickems. but that's the way it goes. You win some, you lose some. Spirit is another team we have to talk about here, because obviously they did make it through to the champion stage. 3-0. and oh. Incredible. Incredible. If you go back and watch my previous two videos on this major, you would have heard me say in both occasions that I was thinking about putting them through my challenger stage, and I didn't. They would have been my next team if I did. And then the same thing for my legend stage as well. And both times I've not fully believed in them. And both times it's bit me in the ass. So there's something to be learned there. There's a lesson to be learned. Our zero three 3 teams were Bad News Eagles and Liquid. Um, I thought Liquid, and I said this in my previous video, I thought coming back from the O2 would give them a spark that they would win a map or two here. I didn't think that they'd go through, but I didn't think they'd 0-3, and I thought that they were a bit unlucky to get the 0-3 matchup, or the 0-2 matchup, I should say, against Vitality. That was unfortunate, but it's the way it goes sometimes. Whereas BNE and Imperial got their 0-2 matchup together. I think if Liquid get Imperial, they beat Imperial. I think BNE should have beat Imperial, to be completely honest. I think maybe the situation, the occasion got to them a little bit. Um, there's some very questionable force buys and saves and trying to retake sites with like five seconds to go with no kit and things like this. Just things that I think under normal circumstances, they they wouldn't fall into those traps. But it's a major and the pressure's on. So, champion stage it is. All matches. Nip and Face, Spirit Furia, Ents Copenhagen Flames, Na'Vi and Heroic. There's obviously some banger quarterfinals here. I mean, they're all good matches, but I think the ones people are looking at is Na'Vi Heroic and probably Nip and Phase is the two standout quarters on this side. Also, the brackets have worked out where the two favourites, I think, to go to through to the finals probably should meet each other, and that's going to be Phase and Na'Vi. Now, Nip are a team that went under a lot of people's radars with their Legend stage picks, including me. I just didn't think that they would be in contention to make this work um, S tag coming in, obviously a good player, don't get me wrong, but the whole device situation, and I was worried that they wouldn't have the the firepower required, but they, they looked really good. <clears throat> and the problem here, though, is that they're against FaZe in the first game, and I have FaZe to go very far in this tournament. I said that in my previous video. The way that they performed so far, even though there was a couple of shaky moments, um, I think that they they've shown that level is still there rain had some un unreal plays and obviously he's one of those guys that i think a lot of people underrate as a player and what he brings to the table and that's just you know mentioning one player so i think phase will will have enough to beat nip it may be a very close game i could see it going three maps but i think phase more often than not should with their map pool be okay spirit and furia um this has the potential to be a really really fun match I think stylistically, Fury and Spirit actually mesh quite well against each other. A lot of aggression. Spirit have this amazing vibe on their team. They're super young. They're like I think they might be the youngest team at this major and have been throughout. Um, 
Patsy's, I want to say, 18. I think Siren's 18. Magic's is 18. Dexter's 20. And Chopper's 25. So what will be surprising for a lot of people there is like Magic's being 18 because he's been in this team now for quite some time. And I, I thought he was like 23, 24 because I've had the the pleasure of seeing this team and some of these players like really really grow into the scene and like become more established players over the years. I've casted a lot of tier two, tier three stuff in the past with like Dreamhack and Dreamhack qualifiers. And so I've seen a lot of these players for a very, very long time. So he's eighteen. He has so much experience for an eighteen year old, it's nuts. But this team's also um they have so much personality and you know, Patsy being so young, so much pressure, so many doubts about him but he's winking at the camera he's smiling he's got so much personality and like he's so calm and collected and the aspect that we have to talk about as well is that the champion stage is in front of a crowd legends and challenges although it is our major because there's no crowd there for a lot of these players it's like playing in a studio for just a longer amount of time i'll say pgl have done a fantastic job um the hotel situation with the studios was, was super super easy to travel between there's there's catering here there's food here it's all very very convenient for the players and i think that they've made this as comfortable as possible for the players to, to bring their a game i'm sure there'll be a fantastic setup at the arena as well but the crowd is undeniable and this is going to play a part the thing is though it's hard to know what side it'll bring will it be a detriment maybe to in a lot of cases it will but a thing that we don't often talk about is a crowd can sometimes bring out the best in people as well it can sometimes be that electric energy that ignites a fire in some of these players and really gets them to perform to their their a game it's hard to say which of these is going to be true i think spirit though have shown that they're pretty much unaffected by anything they've been through so far I think they've got the personalities that will shine on a crowd stage. I think they've got the kind of personalities as well where they have no pressure. Coming into this tournament to be able to peel the curtain back a little bit, um, I had heard that basically the the CEO or like whoever the, the leader is of the spirit guys said to them, there's no pressure, there's no expectations coming into this major. We don't expect you to make it through challenges. We don't expect you to make it through legends. We don't expect you to win the major because of the new standing they had with like Patsy coming in and Siren. There's basically no expectations, no pressure at all. They're playing this with no pressure and they're young guys that have had tons of success. I'm going to have Spirit to beat Furia for that reason. And Furia looked a little bit shaky to me. Like honestly, they shouldn't be in the champion stage if G2 were able to finish off that third map, which they should have. Um, and Spirit have just been incredible the entire way through. They just 3-0'd. They, what, 3 one in the challenger stage. Uh, you can't say further than that. Ents in the Flames also has the makings of a really good game, I think. Um, the, in terms of performance, in terms of consistency, Ents are just the better team. They obviously got through challenges, went through legends, and looked comfortable. In both situations, the Flames were scraping by, they were, they started 2-0, and right? But they went down to 2-2. Two and two. When it came to best of threes, they were struggling. That was the problem. And that was the problem last time as well. This is obviously a best of three. And you're against Ents, who have looked very, very good. We've had Hades being more consistent. Spinks has just been an undeniable beast this entire major. So I'm going to have Ents to take this game. I think it will favour them probably the game of the quarterfinals and in some cases this could even be the grand finals to be honest Na'Vi and Heroic um, Na'Vi came through 3-0 and unscathed looked very good Heroic had a bit of more of a scrappy affair had to go through in the 2-2 game against Vitality we saw a Mirage performance that was out of this world and some some performances from Stown in particular that were just uh I mean, kind of, it, it rendered me speechless watching him play. The confidence he had, the ability to entry or lurk, to get it done on both sides. He wasn't just a CT one-hit wonder. He was doing it on the T side a lot as well. He was orping as a secondary orp, as we know he can. Some people would even argue 
that he's a better author than Cadian is. He is just this incredible Swiss army knife player. You know, he can do everything. And he can do everything to a very high level. I was so impressed with how he played. The problem here is, though, that Na'Vi just have too much firepower. They have too much to contend with, and I think their map pool is also better. Additionally, they did look better in the Legend stage. They didn't drop maps. They didn't have scrapes. They didn't get cuts and bruises like Heroic did. And so I'm going to have Na'Vi to make it through this. The defending champions for a reason. So our last four teams, Phase Spirit, Ents, and Na'Vi. A Phase and Spirit... I think, to be honest, FaZe should win this like 65-70% of the time in my head. I think in terms of the storyline of Spirit, I think this is where it comes to an end. Um, this is also if Spirit do make it through the quarters where the players may start putting pressure on their themselves. Expectations like, holy shit, we're in the semi-finals of a major. Can we win this? Etc, etc. Maybe, maybe not. Even if that doesn't happen, though, I think FaZe have too much to deal with. You got Carrigan still still wants his hands on that major. This veteran of, of Counter Strike that's been around for so long. Um so much experience and I think that that's gonna prevail over Spirit. But Spirit I can see pulling off a very brave and valiant fight. And let's be honest, if this is aware their major comes to a run, they get through to the semi finals, they've gone above and beyond what anyone could have wildly expected from them. The wildest dreams. And even if they get knocked out in the quarters, Spirit have have done an amazing job to get this far. Truly incredible stuff. Ensign Na'Vi. I've got Na'Vi to beat this one. Um, or to win this one, I should say, and beat Ents. I can see it being another good game. I, I could see this being a game where maybe like it gets a bit close and maybe even Ents make Na'Vi bleed a little bit. You know, they take a map off them or take it to OT or something like that. But... Again, similar to the Spirit Phase game, I just think Na'Vi has too much. I think they have too many components. Even if Simple isn't popping off and having a crazy game, there's this bit and perfecto and electronic, and it's just, it, it's hard to see how they can break Na'Vi down. I think this have to be Na'Vi getting in their own heads more so than anything else. And then Phase Na'Vi Grand Finals. A finals that a lot of people expected coming into the Major. And here it is. Uh, this, this would be a phenomenal finals, I think, if it did happen. I understand that a lot of people are putting a lot of stock in this idea that Na'Vi are going to crumble, that the whole situation that's going on right now in that area of the world, I won't get into politics, but like the, the situation is going to weigh down on them. Um, I don't necessarily know if that if if that's true. And I'd even go a step further. It wouldn't surprise me if that motivates Na'Vi even more to win this. To to rep that part of the world. To do it for those people. And, um, you know, in all of the, the chaos and all of the, the bleakness, something for people to be inspired by. It wouldn't surprise me if this actually drives them to perform better. To step their game up even more. And I'm going to have Na'Vi to win this. I, it's not just that. I'm not just going purely off that narrative. I think Na'Vi, additionally, people ask me who do I think is going to win this major. I said Na'Vi before we started. Um, I think FaZe looked a little bit worse for wear in the Legend stage compared to Na'Vi, so I have to go off that, obviously. I think in terms of the Grand Finals, Na'Vi did it last time. And this is maybe where FaZe get in their own heads a little bit. They're so close, yet so far from the finish line. Additionally, I think map pool may slightly favor Na'Vi, and I'm going off the basis that every player plays to like 80% capabilities. I think in that case, Na'Vi are too good on that day. It's going to be very close, though. I think this is going to be a banger of a finals. It might even be one of the best finals of all time in a major. I hope it is, if we get this. But I'll have Na'Vi just squeaking by and defending their major championship. We're going to update those picks. Hopefully, we can get gold now, uh, seeing as the Diamond Dream is dead and buried. Uh, all the best for your pickums as well, guys. And thank you very much for watching these videos. Really appreciate it. Next time the major rolls around, uh, we'll jump into them again. Good luck.